had an amazing time chatting with Tiffany Walker, a strategist for career-minded women and the co-host over at Pop and Banter. Although Tiffany is not an attorney, she has over a decade of experience working in corporate America and now works with professional women to create a strategy for achieving their goals. On today's show, we talk about Tiffany's leap of faith, what it means to have it all, and best practices for goal setting. I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome, Tiffany Walker. I am super excited to have you on the podcast this morning. I'm really excited to be here with you today. So you are somebody who I was really excited to chat with because you recently made a big leap in your life, but I would love if you could give us a little bit more insight into where you are now and how you got there. Sure. So I did make a big leap. So I left a corporate job after being there for 12 years. I was vice president of sales and product. It was a rapid growth technology company. And I was working with media and TV broadcast companies like NBC and Hulu and Fox. And so it was very exciting. But I had kind of made a shift in my kind of own mental space about what I really wanted to be doing. And so While I was there, I had been working for two years on basically a side project or side hustle, if you want to call it that, called Pop and Banter, which started as a blog, then a podcast, and then really a company because now we're doing things like goal setting workshops and rolling out more kind of product and service related things. And so I'm also now coaching. So I'm a strategist for what I call career minded working moms or women, but there's a lot that goes into being a mom that makes some of the things like time management and productivity really important in terms of being able to have it all. And so that's what I'm doing now. I am excited to talk about what you think about having it all. But before we get there, I'd love to start with, you said you had a mindset shift. How did that start for you? So for me, and I think if you have any moms who listen to your podcast, they may relate. I had two kids. I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old. I have two and, as well, and they are three and one. Okay, there you go. So, <laughs> so I, I think, literally am you like two years ago. <laughs> yeah, you are, really. <laughs> so for me, I would say it definitely, my career was still important to me. But my focus was really on surviving (laughs) during those years of having newborns or when you're pregnant, you know, you're not going to make a career shift at that point in time, or at least I wasn't comfortable making a career shift at that point in time. And so once I would say my youngest, you know, was sleeping and things like that, it was almost as if I woke up and I just wanted something different. And I really wanted a positive space. I wanted to be able to help other people. And I just didn't feel like what I was doing at the time was what I wanted to be doing in the future. I didn't have, I'm a very kind of ambitious, goal-oriented person. And there was just nothing for me. There was nothing that was driving me in my current role. And so I really had to sit back and reevaluate that. And it, it took a lot of time, honestly. I took time to you know, read books. I did different courses online to try and figure out what was important to me, what I valued, what I really wanted my life to look like in the future. And because I had been at my company so long, it was just really hard to leave. There was a lot of people there that I felt were like family to me. And I had been with the company as it had grown. It was about 200 people when I started. And it was over 1,500 in a public company by the time I left. Wow. And so it was very difficult for me to leave, even though I needed to. But by that time, I was really clear and really excited about some of the things that I was doing outside of my full-time job. And it just felt like the right time to make that move. I'm so interested in what courses and books you, because I also started with courses and books about, yeah. and as a lawyer, mine were really lawyer focused, kind of like law after <laughs> life after the law and oh. all these books that those actually weren't the ones that helped me. It was more the personal development space stuff. And then once I moved more into the Danielle Laporte, like Marie Forleo, right. like that oh, space, yeah. that resonated with me a little bit more because I realized what I wanted wasn't necessarily to leave my job, but to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. Mm-hmm. And the job was not the problem. It was my lack of clarity that was the problem. Right. So what kind of stuff were you looking at? 
So similar, all of that was more on the self-development side. And I would say books are really important to me. And Mm -hmm. I had stopped reading as much after Mm -hmm. I had my kids. And so we had done a once a month, my business partner and I, when we were blogging, we were reviewing books. And so it really reignited that for me. And most of the ones that we read were related to self-development or creativity or things like that. Like one of the very first ones was Creativity Inc. And that is more of a corporate kind of focus because it's about Pixar. Okay. Really interesting book. But that was one of the first ones. And then we were reading things like Brene Brown. Mm-hmm. And more recently, we've read things like Elizabeth Gilbert's yes. Big Magic. Big Magic and is magical. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Or things like Essentialism, which to me, even now, is something that I you know, want to go back and reread because it was about mm-hmm. focusing on what's most important for you at that time. So it just kind of I just really feel like it was like an awakening in some way. And then one of the courses that I did is by, uh, she has a podcast, but she also has a course, Jess Lively. Oh my gosh. I love Jess Lively. Yeah. <laughs> you Did you do the Life with Intention? I did Life with Intention and I really liked that too. And in fact, at the end of it, you have a set of intentions for different parts of your life. Mm -hmm. And I literally, you know, wrote it up, printed out, and it's, you know, on my refrigerator (laughs) at my house. And so, you know, it's just what you said is getting clear on what you want out of life and where you're going. And had it been, I struggled because I could see myself still being in a corporate job. And, you know, in the future, I may go back to that as well. But for me, I felt like there is a piece of me that wasn't being used, that wasn't being kind of ignited at my current role. And outside of that, it just felt like this, it was moving so fast outside of my full-time job in terms of what we were doing with Pop and Banter and helping to support other ambitious women and getting feedback from them that I just felt this big pull to kind of go after it and try and make that my full-time job. And so so yeah, that's that's how it all happened. Do you agree that it's there's a part of it that the pull gets so strong that you can no longer resist it, that it almost feels like you are no longer living the life you're living? I don't know how else to explain yeah. it. It's like- I, you know, I completely agree. And what I what I always think about is Oprah had this in one of her shows, she talked about how things start as a whisper Mm -hmm. and then they kind of grow and it gets louder and louder. And then it's like, you know, a brick wall is being thrown at you. And that's exactly how it felt for me because I didn't really, you know, it's very scary to leave your job, especially after as long as I had been there. It's really risky to be an entrepreneur and all of that. And I'm very risk averse. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to ignore it, honestly. I really wanted to ignore it. And so it did like a brick wall because a lot of things were happening at my company. And well, I would say that company, not no longer mine. I'm still working on that. Yep. Um, But a lot of things were happening there that made it for me a very toxic environment. It didn't really follow what my values were anymore. You know, I didn't have a career path that I wanted to have there. There were so many things, but it took until it got really extreme for me, for me to actually leave. So I would consider it like my brick wall (laughs) because I didn't listen to the whisper. Yeah. And it's, you have to be willing to listen. Like you have to be open to listening to that whisper. But I think a lot of people aren't because we've kind of, especially for people who are high achieving, been taught that we make decisions through like this logical external like process. And yes. if the whisper doesn't have like a logical foundation, we're like, why are you, why is this voice telling me I should do this weird thing? <laughs> right. It and doesn't it make sense. No. And for me, it didn't feel safe. Yeah. And I actually, and I've written some articles, so I'm comfortable sharing it, but I'm the breadwinner in my family. Mm-hmm. As am I. And so that, you know, for men, it's a, you know, who that traditionally is their role. They've always had this kind of extra pressure. And I felt that pressure mm-hmm. as a woman. And as a mom, having two young kids and that it just felt like that's not the practical thing to do. That's not the safe thing to do. And so I wanted to ignore it. (laughs) Yeah. And unfortunately, it's like one of those things where like true opportunity and like security, unfortunately, are somewhat inversely related. Yeah. You can't stay comfortable and actually and chase your dreams at the same time. 
No, so, you'll just end up miserable, which yeah. I was miserable. So <laughs> yeah, so you're either miserable, like uncomfortable chasing your dreams, or you're uncomfortable living somebody else's life. You know what I mean? Right, right. There are, yeah, somebody else's definition of what success exactly. is. And, yeah. So you just have I to choose which agree. discomfort you <laughs> you want your life to be. Right. Um, That's a great way of putting it. <laughs> I would love to go back to kind of how you managed all of it when you were transitioning with the full-time job, the kids, and the side hustle. Were you sleeping? Were you on like the brink of like a breakdown? (laughs) How was that for you? I definitely – sleep is really important to me. I don't do well on little sleep, which is why it was difficult for me when I had kids because you don't get a choice. You're not getting the sleep that you were. I have always prioritized that for myself because I know that I'm a better person when I have and, and more productive. I just think clear. So I never wanted to give up sleep to do what I needed to do, but it meant I still did get up early in the morning and I have a business partner in some of the things that we do. And so we were meeting, you know, at 7 a.m. for a couple hours before work, or we were meeting for chunks of time on the weekend. And my husband was handling the girls while I was doing that. And I mean, some of that is a negotiation, obviously, if you have a partner in terms of how you're handling those things, particularly when you're a mom. But I would say, even if you're not a mom, there are things around the house and things like that that may require someone else to be kind of pulling up your slack. So I did stuff in the morning. I did stuff at night. I did stuff on weekends. And part of why I ended up going into being a strategist for other kind of career minded working women is because it really required me to have a great plan for my time management, for my productivity, so that the time that I had was being used in the best possible way and that I wasn't wasting time either doing things that I shouldn't do or in a way that took a lot longer, things like batching or um, really getting down to what the most efficient process was for the things that I was doing or blocking time for specific things, which is similar to the batching. That's kind of how I did it. Let's talk more about this time management. What do you find that women, what is the thing that you find that women are are spending time on that they don't need to be or that they're not doing as efficiently as they should be? So I think some of it is just that we are not clear on what it is that's important to Mm -hmm. us. And so it's not necessarily that they're doing things that they shouldn't do, but I guess it could be because If you're same as what we were just talking about from a career perspective, if you're doing things that other basically other people are saying you need to do, that's when you have to reevaluate. And because people put things on your plate or there's all these like shoulds, I should do this. I should do that. I should make this Pinterest, whatever, (laughs) you know, it's not acceptable to just buy my Christmas cards or whatever it is for you or, you know, baking something, or, you know, you're going to somebody else's house and you want to bake a dessert rather than just buying something in the store. So I think there's a lot of things like that where we have to give ourselves permission to say, that's not important to me. And I'm going to focus on the things that are important to me. So that's a lot of time management to start because you've got to whittle it down to what is important to you and what has to be done. And if making your bed, for example, is not a must for you, then don't make your bed. (laughs) Don't spend that time on it. You know, but for some other people, like for me, that makes me feel calm and that I have things together. And so that's a must for me. So on its face, this seems to go counter to the idea of having it all. So I I can imagine that someone who says, I want to have it all, wants to bake the cake. They want to make the bed. They want to be the perfect mom. They want to have the perfect job. How, what's your response to that? Like, how do you define having it all? Yeah. So my response to that is what is having it all? So what does it mean to you? And I don't think that there's a one size fits all definition to that. And so if some of those things like being the Pinterest mom is important to you, then you prioritize that. But if that impacts the quality time that you want to have with your kids or your husband or the time that you have to you know, for example, advance your career. Let's say you do want to put in more hours in what you're doing because you want a promotion. Those are all trade-offs. And so you have to be very clear about what all means to you and 
for me in talking to working moms, it's things like, what are your must haves in terms of your kids lives? So sure, you want to be at every event. But what if you couldn't be at every event that they had? What is your must have? I must go to a school recital or I must be the room mother. Everybody has a different threshold for what those things are and we can't do everything. So it is a bit of a kind of back and forth because it's like you're not doing everything under the sun, but you're doing what you would define as having it all. And how many things can When you think about prioritizing, because I feel the same way, I think you have to build your life by putting the first, making time for the things that are most important first, and then everything else kind of falls around that. Mm -hmm. But I struggle with knowing how many things I can put in that first bucket. Yeah. (laughs) Because obviously my kids are a huge priority for me and they are, you know, always first. But then there's also this passion that I have for building this community and that's a priority as well. And then there's like my husband, who now has become my third in the list of priorities right. <laughs> after this like vague community idea. So then I'm like, okay, I have to move him up. And then- <laughs> Right. And I, I do think that there are things that you just need to make room for. And mm-hmm. so, so if you start with, okay, these are the things that are important to me. And then you get into, okay, how do I take care of the other things that may have to be done but that maybe I can do more efficiently or things like that. So like automating things. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of kind of automating your life as much as you can for things like your finances or even, you know, using Amazon and their subscribe and save where they ship, you know, the items that you need on a regular basis. Or it may be that you're doing grocery deliveries that you can have that time back that you would have spent grocery shopping. So there's a trade-off also in terms of time and money. For example, I outsource cleaning my house. Mm -hmm. And part of that is because, A, I very much value a clean house and my house wouldn't be clean if I didn't. And I don't want to argue with my husband or nag him about (laughs) helping me. (laughs) And I dislike it. And so it's it's worth me making the room in my budget to do that. And so I also think that it's just, it's evolving and you're just never done in terms of trying new things and figuring out what's going to work for your life at any one time. Because what worked for me several years ago no longer works and it doesn't fit the life that I want now. So I think you have to be flexible to how your life is going to change over time and try new things that may work. Like you may try a date night every Saturday and that doesn't work or you don't do it. But then you decide, actually, we're going to do, you know, a Thursday night We're going to both make sure that we're home in time to cook a nice dinner after the kids are in bed. And that's going to be our quality time. And we're going to hold that time sacred to us. You know, whatever works for you, or maybe it's a breakfast or a coffee before you go to work and you you do that once a week or things like that. So there are all different ways to do whatever the goal is. You just have to try out kind of how the pieces will work together. Are you someone who like, so my husband and I, we do date night every other Friday. And so the nanny knows that every other Friday, she has to stay late and it's already Mm -hmm. on the books. And then we take turns planning. We each have to plan one a month. So because it's on, I mean. It's on your calendar. Yeah. So then (laughs) we, even if it means we sit in the car and like drive in circles and end up at the same restaurant because neither of us remembered it was our turn (laughs) to plan, we know we're going to get that time together. And so it's not working as well necessarily as we had hoped, but we're really committed to doing it for this like year, like it was our plan for this year. And so I was just wondering, are you somebody who commits to a plan for an amount of time or are you constantly like assessing whether it's working? Because I don't know if that was the best way to do it. Like maybe we would have been better off three months ago saying, okay, let's try something else because we've gotten to this ramen restaurant like 15 times this year. (laughs) And that may be okay. And you may just need to give yourself a pass that what you planned is not the way it works for you. And so – I do. I am one of those people. I really strongly believe that we have to constantly evolve and try new things. And I think that we, you're at a disadvantage if you don't do that, because then you're committed to something that may not work for your life. And whether that's, you know, your date nights and how you want that to happen or anything else, because there's one thing, like, for example, for me, since I've had kids, I've struggled a lot in terms of exercising regularly. And I always know. I mean, I tell myself, okay, you tell everyone else, try something else (laughs) 
(laughs) And so that's what you need to do. Like make a plan, put it on your calendar, try something else, and then evaluate if it's working for you or not. And if it's not, think about another way you might approach it. The power of putting something on your calendar, I think, is grossly underestimated. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, I completely agree. I'm trying to remember who I was saying, oh, Lisa Nichols. I don't know if you read any of her. The name sounds familiar, but I haven't. She just released a book, Abundance Now. And one of the things she does, she was the first, she was the second, I think, Black female to take a a company public. Wow. So she's phenomenal. And she, you know, was on welfare. She's like a phenomenal story. And one of the things she does is she's a huge believer in planning. And at the beginning of every year, she makes all of her employees put their vacation on the calendar. Oh, so like, wow. E- they don't have to know where they're going, they, but she wants everybody's vacation to be planned out so that everybody can respect that time and projects can be planned around people's vacations instead of people planning their vacations around projects, which I think is such an interesting concept and something I've been trying to do with my vacation because vacation and travel is really important to us. Mm-hmm. And I was finding that with two kids and two jobs, it was harder and harder to kind of block that time out. So now yeah. we just take the our birthdays are a week apart. And before we had kids, we'd always take that week off. So we put that <laughs> back on the calendar. And now we take the whole week off and go on vacation. And it's in like the fall. So like the fact that I usually have it planned by like February is <laughs> a little type A, but I look forward to it all year. And Every year, Facebook reminds me of what a good job I did last year. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> I I mean, I love that. I mean, I am very, obviously, very type A. Yeah. And so, I mean, I always used to plan out what my vacation was. And part of that is, too, like I, I had two kids in daycare. And so when I had a certain amount of time at my company, I wanted to make sure I knew where it was going and that, you know, if it's a holiday that I was planning for that, that's a day off that I needed to take. Or, you know, I, we always go visit my parents in Colorado in the summer. And so I knew that was time I was going to take and things like that are, you know, around the holidays, I wanted time. So I always did that, but I have kind of mixed reactions. I like the intention Mm -hmm. of what, you know, planning it at the very beginning, but making that a requirement and that that's the time that you've committed to, you can't do anything spontaneous. Like what well, if your friends- think, Yeah, no, I don't think yeah. she's saying it's your only vacation. I think she's saying make sure- Just you make sure you have some. Make sure you have one big, exciting vacation. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Then right. I'm, I'm, I'm in support. <laughs> uh, at least that's how I was reading it because I had the exact same response as you. <laughs> I was like, like, well, my year can't change. Like, what if there's some great opportunity I want to (laughs) take? Yeah, for sure. I'm sure that with your goal setting workshop, you have a pretty clear process around goal setting. And I know that that's something I'm always looking to learn more about because I love developing processes and systems. Yes. And I think that goal setting is one of the things that I've learned. I do a lot of study into happiness. And one of the things that really improves our happiness is having goals that are in alignment with our values that we feel like we're working towards and making progress on. And I think a lot of people don't have that. Like, yeah. Especially the alignment part. People have these right. kind of goals that they set every year, like they want to lose 10 pounds, but like they don't even know why anymore. It's just, they just keep rolling it over. That's always my example too. When I talk <laughs> about goals, I love it. <laughs> Um, Yeah. I mean, I would say for what we do in our goal setting workshop, it's those two, it's two pieces that I would say is different than probably what a lot of other people do when they set goals or when they read an article or when they do kind of new year's resolutions. It's, you know, about that time or around that time of year is that they a do what you just said, which is they say, I want to lose 10 pounds, but they don't think about the why behind it. And so it may be that you want to lose 10 pounds because you want to be healthier and have more energy for your kids and you want to live a long time. And that's the real reason for that goal. But most people are just like, I would like to fit into my jeans again. And so I'd like to lose 10 pounds. And you just, there's no motivation behind that, that you, that's why people abandon it. So I think it's important to spend that time and know that the things that you're working on are aligned with your values. And so there's that. And there, and again, it's, I'm a big believer that nothing is one size fits all. And so you really have to think about what's important in your life. Like for me last year, I focused on my marriage because 
when you have kids, like you just said, in terms of how you ordered (laughs) your priorities, you know, I just didn't feel like I focused as much on my marriage. And I wanted to make sure I want to model a, a, I want it for myself, but I also want to model a good marriage for my kids. And so that was one of the priorities that I had in 2016. But then on the back end, one of the things that we're really, really focused on in the workshop is making an action plan Mm -hmm. and having accountability and tracking because at least for me, for years, I would make goals at the beginning of a year or whenever I felt like I wanted to, I guess, because I am type A. And then I would forget about them. And I would never make a plan to actually reach them. It was like these aspirational things that I wanted to be, but I never really figured out how am I going to get there and what is my first step and who's going to keep me accountable in that process. And that's the difference between being successful in your goals and never reaching them. And so that's what we're doing with the goal setting workshop. And we're setting it up so that people can find other people who are like them, who are wanting to really work on their goals in 2017. And they'll have that support of other people who want to do that too. So if you don't have that in your life necessarily where you want to share what your goals are, I think your husband's a great person to share those things with. But you know, the accountability is really important for somebody who's going to say, Tiffany, how's it going on that goal for you to exercise every week? You know, what have you tried? You know, if it's not working, asking you, okay, well, what else could you do? So to me, that's important. And the community and support is really important because I'm a big believer in not trying to do everything alone. And I think strong women, particularly and ambitious women, try and just do it all by themselves. And to me, that for myself personally ended in kind of burning out, being really stressed out and very unhappy. And so I think that connection part is important too. I think that that's so simple in some in some ways but for some reason people have such trouble with it but when you lay it out like that it's something that's totally accessible to anybody do you know what I mean yes it is it absolutely is (laughs) because I think some people are just like well I just am not good at that like I'm not good at accomplishing my goals or setting goals for myself or you know they create all these like reasons why it can't work and one of the things that I especially have been encouraging myself and others to do when they set goals is to really set goals that are in your control. Mm -hmm. Because I think when you set goals, even like the lose 10 pounds, it's a little bit out of your control whether or not you'll hit that 10 pound number. Whereas if you say go to the gym once a week, that's 100% in your control. So there's something empowering about that goal because you decide whether or not you succeed. (laughs) Right. No, absolutely. I think that's a great point. And I mean, in the 10 pounds, like you may be very healthy and have gained a lot of muscle. Mm Mm-hmm. And you didn't lose the yep. weight, but but the end goal is what hopefully you had in mind, like I was saying before, in terms of being healthy and having energy or whatever it means to you. So yeah, I completely agree. It has to be it has to be in your control in terms of what your action plan is. Mm-hmm. So a couple more things I want to touch on before we wrap up is I know you're somebody who also believes in having kind of a word to guide you throughout the year. Yes. And I don't know, have you thought of yours for 2017 yet? Are you sharing that yet? <laughs> so I haven't done it for 2017. I mean, we we did it for our business. Mm-hmm. And so we just, we've done already our 2017 planning because we, we want to take off some time in the holidays. And yep. so ours for 2017 is Inspire Ooh. because we do, we want to inspire our audience and we really want them to be excited about their lives and what they're working towards. So that's that one. But I have not done it personally for myself for 2017. But for 2016, I kind of cheated because it's two words. (laughs) But mine was show up. And I meant it like show up with what my opinion is with what I stand for, show up for my friends and family who need me be there when they need me and support them. So it had kind of dual meaning for me. And I just think it's really powerful to set a word or a theme for your year. Because for me, you know, a lot of things happen that I could have never imagined when I decided that that was going to be my word. I really thought I was going to be in, you know, the high level meeting at my old company. And I was going to make sure that my opinion was known when I didn't necessarily agree with what was going on or things like that. That's really how I envisioned it. And 
I left my job. I ended up on TV talking about being a woman breadwinner. You know, I was on Huffington Post and it was on the woman's section for almost a week, my women breadwinner post. So I think those things are just, you just don't know where it's going to go. But I think I kind of am a believer in putting it out there into the universe about Mm -hmm. what it is that you want to do. And based on what happened to me, I would say there are things that just kind of you attract when you, when you get clear about what you want. Oh my gosh. I couldn't agree more. My word for this year was patience. And oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I needed it. Um, because I kind of like last year was getting into this, like super excited about all these dreams I had. And then was starting to feel really impatient about getting there mm-hmm. and like was ready to just like quit my job and like travel the world and like just be this whole new person. And I was like, that doesn't actually resonate with me. It just, that's something I want to do, but it doesn't need to happen right now. And like my life is long and I'm in this season of my life and I need to give it, you know, trust the timing of my life. And so patience has been a hard one for me, but it's something that's easy for me to go back on when I start to feel restless and say, am I being patient in my life? Am I being patient with my kids? Am I being patient with myself? I think that's a good one too, because often we don't recognize all the things that we have already done Mm -hmm. because I feel the same way sometimes. And I could probably use that patience (laughs) word. Maybe that'll be my word for 2017. But usually you're already doing a lot. If you're impatient, you're probably already actually accomplishing a lot and you just aren't recognizing it in terms of the progress you've made. My word for 2015 was gratitude. And so I was, I did it, you know, I tried to be gracious and practice gratitude more in my life. And so I think it's a natural progression of the words of becoming more and more kind of internal. Have you decided on your word for 2017? I think it's going to be create. Ah. Because I want to start putting stuff, more stuff out in the world. Um, Mm -hmm. I think I'm done with the research justifying, validating (laughs) stage. And I need to just start um, interacting and participating. So we'll see. I haven't quite nailed it down, but that's the one that's really, you know, in my head. I have scheduled time to do my prep for 2017 that last week of December. So we'll see. We'll see what I come up with. (laughs) Well, thank you so much, Tiffany, for being on with me today. I would love for you to share with my guests where they can find you and learn more about what you do. Sure. So you can find me at popandbanter.com. It also has a link if anyone's interested in the strategy and coaching that I do to to that website because I have another website there too for just that. And you can find me on basically every social channel at either Pop and Banter, which is my company, or Tiffany L. Walker. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. And it was so great to catch up with you. And I will put all of that in the show notes so people can learn more about you. Thank you so much. This was so fun. Thank you for joining me for the Happy Lawyer Project podcast. Please head over to my website, www.thehappylawyerproject.com for more information from today's show. While you're there, I'd love it if you'd leave me your thoughts on the show. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, Facebook, or follow me on Instagram. If you've enjoyed the show, please share it with your friends. And don't forget to head over to iTunes to subscribe and review the show. As you know, each rating helps more listeners find the show and helps me get awesome guests on here for you guys. If there's anyone you'd like me to have on the show, or if you'd like to be on the show, head over to my website and let me know, or send me an email at acoma, O-K-E-O-M-A, at thehappylawyerproject.com. A special thanks to everyone who's left a review, sent me an email, or reached out to me in any way. I appreciate you. Thank you again for spending this time with me. And if you would like to learn more about working in your gift and living your passion, head over to the website for a free gift. Until next time, bye.